Hello again. So I mentioned uh, just before popping off stage that we've got a very exciting team kit announcement to make. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got it coming up now. It's not just one team, but two for 2019. Very exciting. And first up on stage, I want to welcome two very special riders who between them have a Milan San Remo, a Pai Bay, a veteran of 15 Grand Tours and 36 Classics. Ladies and gentlemen, it's John Degenkolb and Kuhn de Court. Hey. Hello. Welcome, welcome, gentlemen. Hello, nice everybody. to be here. Hi. Nice to be here again. Yeah, uh, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, John, I want to chat to you first of all, because I mean, it won't need any introducing, I wouldn't think, to anybody in this particular audience, but you did provide one of, I mean, I was going to say one of the standout moments of 2018 racing, but it's one of my standout moments of the last couple of years of racing. and and a stage win that I think encapsulates everything that is beautiful about cycling, yeah. really. Talk us through stage nine of the Tour de France this year. Yeah, I it's, it's nice that you say this. I mean, I'm, uh, I really appreciate this. And uh, it was um, uh, yeah, a really uh, intense mm -hmm. moment, uh, intense uh, time also afterwards. Uh, um, uh, it changed uh, a lot again. and. Uh, I was uh, fighting through like a really hard time, uh, um, uh, yeah. And this 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 day released all the pressure. Um, uh, um, crossing that line, um, winning that stage uh, was was uh, something um, fantastic. I mean, it's 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 really hard to to find the right words for this to express the, all these emotions. I mean, you could see in the interview afterwards that I was just like. <laughs> I was just done. Um, uh, um, didn't know what to say. Um, n not to presume, I shouldn't really presume knowledge, I guess, um, but John obviously had a, a terrible crash in training in, in 2016, um, and along with a number of, of teammates. It was, it was horrific, and everyone was incredibly worried. It's been a long battle back on the bike, I guess, psychologically as well as, as physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you... If you struggle from one setback to the next and mm. to the next, and uh, um, I never stopped believing in myself, and uh, neither did my team and uh, all my like the people behind me who were supporting me. So uh, it was it was uh, like logic to to always stand up and and, and fight for the next battle. But uh, yeah, at certain moments you come to a point that. Uh, um, of course, uh, also doubts are starting if, if this is uh, still possible to, to reach that level to, to win these this big races again. And uh, um, once I was, I was there and uh, um, in this position to win that race again and uh, in also on that particular day, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I won Roubaix before and uh, then it was like a deja vu to be to be there up there in uh, in a three man breakaway basically the same the same breakaway when i won uh, in 15 in roubaix going uh, going to the same town city and uh, just in front of the finishing in front of the velodrome there um, was was uh, yeah incredible well that's the thing because you won on the stage that was in roubaix this year, and as you say, you won Pyro Bay before 2015, before the crash. Um, did you have a sense of that poignancy of the the potential history of what you're about to do as you were coming into that? What turned out to be the stage win, or was it just about going for that bloody line? I mean, I was I was actually really really confident once I was there in the in that break, and uh, I I mean, as a cyclist uh, in like. You have a feeling of like how how your condition is right now, and I was building up actually in the tour. I was getting better and better day by day, and uh, yeah, m the confidence was high. the The support of the team was was good, and uh, everything was was set up perfectly. So we had, uh, we had everything was was so well prepared, and uh, I was I was just really confident I can I can do this, and I can beat also the other guys there in the sprint. So. I didn't even hesitate to take that uh, final sprint from the front because I, I, I said either I go from the front or from the back, but I have to make sure 
I watched them because I don't. I the only thing would could uh, could have killed that moment was was could have, would have been a like a surprise attack when the, I react too late. So I said like uh, I have to make sure if they attack like bam straight away on the wheel. So um, and then. We waited until the last 200 meters and then I start sprinting. <laughs> so an emotional win, um, <coughs> which made for a bit of an emotional year, I guess, for the team. Cohen, what was your highlight of 2018 from, from your racing? Uh, I think it was uh, definitely uh, John's win for, for me. Um, of course, uh, having raced with him for such a long time already now and uh, being involved with, uh, with, with everything he has been involved with for, for the last uh, no, what, 66 years or something. Seven. Uh, seven years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I know you know what he's been through. We we always room together, so uh, I, I spend quite a lot of time with him. So I know what he put into it. Um, I personally didn't have the greatest day there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I had to uh, I had to give my bike to Bauke. But no, not condition wise. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I he had some other duties to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, when I heard it, I was obviously really happy. Um, no, it was it was it was really great. I heard it when I was riding with Michael Gogol in a group and. Um, and Michael, uh, he's, uh, he's also sort of part of our group of friends, uh, so uh, also outside of racing. And um, yeah, it was, it was a really great moment and uh, it makes me um, really happy for, for him, but also for myself. I mean, uh, we, are, we are a team and uh, for him to win a stage like that was just uh, in, in incredible, actually. So. What were the celebrations like that, that night? I mean, I know it was early in the tour, but I mean, it must have been a bit special. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, it was also uh, rest day the day after, so uh, we could we could have more than one beer. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us how many? Um, I'm pretty sure it was three or four. Right. Which yeah, is we'll, pretty we'll crazy. leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, gentlemen, you're here to launch the new team kits, so I'm going to ask them, Superman styley, to head off the stage, twirl around a little bit, and come back with the new kit. Is that right? I, I thought we'd do striptease here. I'm not Get a jet music. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well right. up for that. Anybody else? Uh. Yeah, there's at least one hand there. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I've got a friend. For all the gentlemen, maybe you'll have to go off. All right. We can go okay. and peek. <laughs> right, if you go off and yeah. Uh, yeah. come back with a brand new kit, thank you very much. And I think in the meantime, we can have a little look at a video here. Sorry. <laughs> So there we have it. The question is, these boys quick on their bikes. How quick are they with uh, disrobing? Any sign of them? <laughs> are they nearly there? Nearly there? The moment of truth. Here we are. The brand new <laughs> Trek Segafredo kit 2019. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, we'll maybe do, we'll maybe do this bit standing up, actually, so we can get it in its, in its glory. So, gentlemen, first of all, actually, what do we think? You like yeah, it? Yeah, like it? Yeah. yeah. Thumbs up or? <laughs> up or down? Yeah. yeah up. Up's up, all right. Reckon. Good, 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 good. That's what we like to see. What do you two think of it? I love it. Yeah? I really like it. Um, uh, it's like, I mean, both of them. I, I like this one really a lot because we, obviously, we train uh, in, in this one. Which uh, gives gives uh, more visibility, yeah. more yeah. more more, sec more more safety mm -hmm. on the bike, and uh, but I like this one actually really a lot. It's yeah, I think very classical and it will yeah. still stand out in the bunch. I think so. Uh, I like the the back the black uh, nicks. Yeah, mm. that's great. Very sharp. Yeah, yeah very it's sharp. very smart. Yeah. What what does it feel like compared to kits gone by? How, <coughs> what's the difference, I guess, between this and anything before? Uh, we have, we have uh, some we have some fine tuning uh, with uh, in in cooperation with Santini with from the from the fabrics. We have some uh, like this this fabric is like completely new, um, uh, um, which is like 
very very comfortable yeah. mm. um, this is the um, anti crash well the so protection crash protection that's a bit bigger yeah it's also we don't want to crash <laughs> <laughs> but still they give us protection so yeah 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 i think it's a safe option uh, yeah okay <laughs> just in case just in case yeah All yeah right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no. There's always every year uh, um, a couple of changes. Actually, Santini is really good with that. Where um, you know we uh, we say what we think could be improved, and uh, and they do implement that, which is also uh, also a nice uh, nice thing. And we've got white socks. White Finally, <laughs> white socks. I love it. Yeah, you got Finally. a few rounds of applause there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. um, I'm quite sure we've got a few kit geeks here. I don't think that's an insult amongst present company. Um, so tell us what you really loved about um, the kit last year and what's, what stayed on that you really like. Is there any particular bit of clothing? Um, I think uh, I really, I actually really like this jersey. I think it's um, with, the, with the sleeve length is for me uh, really, uh, really good. And it's, it's nice and, and tight aerodynamic, but it's still comfortable. It's the right amount of stretchy. For me, so uh, even the in right the, even in the stretch, off season, that's technical. Yeah. <laughs> even in the off season, you, 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 I feel really <laughs> sad. You can you can you can still breathe. <laughs> yeah, I think you're looking okay, boys. John, is there anything in particular that you have liked wearing with the kit of the last couple of seasons? Sorry. Okay. Is there anything in the kit in particular? It's my accent yeah. that you've liked wearing in the last couple of seasons that that you're looking forward to wearing this year, next year. Uh. We changed a lot the. Um, uh, you wanted the winter, pe the winter. The, the winter, like the, like the, um, how you, how you say this? Like for the like heavy conditions. Uh, also like rain, rain clothing. We have uh, some uh, new super nice products, and uh, I'm uh, hashtag rain lover. So, <laughs> uh, so I, I don't mind the rain so much, and as long as it's not uh, like super cold. And, yeah. Uh, um, but therefore you need like. Good clothing, and uh, um, I'm usually riding, uh, make, having having good races in the rain. So, and, and if you have uh, good good clothing, then uh, you have a massive advantage uh, to the other guys. Great. But I have I have one more question actually to you guys. Uh, mm. um, uh, what do you think? How many uh, this uh, entwurf like uh, entwurf? How many t how many times uh, you you think? Santini has to do like a uh, like a uh, prototype design. of the jersey, design. like the design. How, how many times? What do you think? Like for one for one kit for this kit for that for, for like for this output. How many times you think uh, they have to play around with the colors and with uh, take it to the with sponsors. the design and go to the big boss? I mean, obviously uh, in the end, John Berg is the the, the owner of Trek. Heading uh, ahead here. And, uh, <laughs> I, um, Give us a shout out. He, how many times? How many, how many times? times? What do you think? From two to fifty, five zero. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's a range. <laughs> Are they within the range? They were within the range. They were within the range. Yeah. <laughs> but who is the closest? Thirty-eight, four, forty, or fourteen? Fourteen. Uh -huh. Anyone right? How much was it exactly? <laughs> 32. 32. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing, yeah? It's yeah. That's attention it, like, to it's, detail. And that also shows what it's, uh, like, the effort behind that. I mean, uh, I think it's a massive applause uh, for, for that. For Santini. Yeah. yeah. For Monica. <laughs> Lovely. Well, I'll ask you both to sit down. You've had a good look at that now. Um, and I'm going to ask about your, your goals for 2019 in this wonderful kit. What will we... What will we see you aiming for in the year in the year ahead? For me, uh, um, uh, definitely the, the the spring classics, uh, 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 like the the main focus, uh, especially like coming now uh, with this uh, confidence boost. Uh, I would say uh, winning winning that stage in Roubaix again. Uh, I want to be up there in the classics again. I had a Pretty bad classic season, I have to admit. Uh, this year, uh, I was struggling with uh, yeah, injuries and uh, and and um, uh, sickness, and uh, in the end, it was pretty much the, my worst classic se season, like the, the spring classics I've I've ever done. Uh, and uh, I want to definitely change that for next year and uh, be up there again and uh, win a monument. That's did you did your Roubaix stage win this year? Is that giving you extra? Confidence 
if you look at the sort of that journey from the comeback, oh, or sure. put I mean, it all uh, to bed in a way. No, I think that just like close the case, like mm -hmm. finally, like yeah. completely, you know, that because then now you, you, we can we can we, we turn the page and uh, and and look forward, and uh, we don't need to think about what happened in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And Colin, what about you? What are your goals? Um, I'm really looking forward to doing Tour Down Under. Um, I spent my off season in Australia. My uh, my wife's, wife's Australian. Australian, yeah. So uh, I, uh, when I race there, it's always uh, a lot of uh, friends and uh, and family of my wife coming to watch. So it uh, it feels like uh, like a home race. And uh, now racing with uh, with Richie Port on the team mm -hmm. is going to be uh, really exciting. He's obviously uh, come close to winning a few times. or won a lot of stages there. So hopefully uh, hopefully he can do well there. And then afterwards, obviously the classics. That's uh, that's the next goal. Just uh, trying uh, trying to help the guys from the team. I mean, it's, you've got John, but uh, a couple more: Matt Peterson, Jasper Stoven. That uh, that will be up there. I think we got quite a few riders that um, are all capable of top tens or even podiums. And I hope we can uh, we can uh, we can play that out with the team. And a big big change to the wider team as well. We've got a women's team for next year. Yep. Really really exciting. What do you guys make of that? It's nice to have some some girls uh, in the in the squad. That's for sure. I mean, it's it's always great. It's good for the atmosphere. It's good for uh, yeah the the feeling in the in the team. Um, uh, we I've been in in several teams before where we had uh, some some girls with us, and uh, you kind of yeah as as soon as you know them also, you you follow also women cycling yeah, more. You yeah, know, yeah. you are more into that, and they are also like. It's 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 nice if you if you know who's who's uh, yeah winning in the best case you know in in the same jersey you have. Mm -hmm. What about you, Colin? Think it's exciting, a good move. Yeah, no, absolutely, really excited about it. I think uh, it's good for the whole of cycling and uh, also for us in the end. I mean, uh, it's not only men watching races and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also not only men riding bikes. So I think it's really important for for us for everyone. And uh, I think the, uh, these women, they uh, sometimes have really incredible races. I follow it and uh, I think they deserve to, uh, to be seen a bit more and hopefully this, uh, this can help. I can attest to that. It's not just men who watch bike races. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but it is a, a potentially an incredibly exciting time in women's cycling. As, as you're probably all aware, we're building towards the introduction of a minimum wage. We've got more and more of the top tier sponsors coming on board now. We're, gonna, we're getting an increasing professionalization of the women's side of the sport. And part of that is the launch of this brand new Trek Segafredo women's team next year. We've got Ellen Van Dyke joining the ranks, Abby Van Twisk, uh, the British rider, and led by none other than the British uh, former world champion who kicked it all off with the announcement at the Tour de France this year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Lizzie Dignan. Lizzie, congratulations. <laughs> I haven't seen you since. Amazing. I don't want to know how you look like that. What, five weeks after giving birth? Yep, yep. Holy moly. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Welcome back. We'll talk about all of that in just a moment. But first of all, the new team. How excited are you? Super excited, yeah. Um, I've been with the same team now for five years and I needed mm. a change, but you don't want to change for the sake of it. You want to change and improve and um, I've definitely done that even though I've not even been with the team yet just uh, the infrastructure and the planning and everybody behind the scenes has, has really been inspiring and exciting so far. How much of a change do you think it's going to be and it's, a, it's an impossible question to answer I guess when you don't know yet but going from Bowles Dolmans the dominant team really in, in women's cycling but a team that very admirably is standalone it doesn't have a, a men's branch to it and going from that to something like the Trek Segafredo setup it will be quite different or will it I guess will it? Um, I mean, it'll be different that we'll be sharing the same training camps and the same uh, infrastructure and staff, which is good because we don't need the same budget as the men's team. Mm -hmm. We can just kind of tap into their resources, which is really useful. Um, and yeah, hopefully, you know, we give them a bit of competition. It's, it's about time. <laughs> Who's going to win more, the men's or the women's team? Oh, the women's team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gotta be, gotta be. Who are you excited about riding. riding with? Oh, everybody. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about working with Elisa Longo-Borghini. Uh -huh. um, 
She's the kind of rider that I can bounce off in, in the classics, you know, as two in the final of a race could be quite an exciting combination. Excellent. Well, I'm going to ask Lizzie now to do your superwoman and go off stage and spin around and come <laughs> back on again. We'll say goodbye to the gentlemen for now and we're going to watch a little video as well. Thank you very much, yeah. gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not just saying that because Santini are here, but that looks pretty sharp. And look at this back already. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> oh, it's a bit tight. <laughs> I think you can be forgiven for that, Lizzie. <laughs> looks amazing, I have to say. Do you like it? Yeah, I love it. Really. Yeah. Yeah, what do really. you like about it? Uh, well, I'm really happy it's blue. Mm -hmm. I've, got, I've got blue eyes and... Uh, you never you liked know? the orange, did no, you? No, I'm not the biggest fan of orange. But, uh, yeah, I just think it's, it's different. It stands out. Mm, it's really nice, actually, and, and distinct from the men's kit as well. Yeah, there's some, some small similarities, which mm. I think is important, because we're kind of all part of the same team, really. But yeah, I'm really, really, really happy with it. And you like your attention to detail. So what are the details about this kit that makes it different from what you've worn before? Um, just the fact that this you know, there's design all the way through it because mm -hmm. often, you know, sponsor-led things are quite just all about the branding, whereas I think they've managed to get branding as well as design on this jersey, which is quite nice. And you've got a, a long-standing collaboration now with Santini. You've launched your own Santini range as well. Um, talk me through that, how it's come about and what your philosophy behind that was. Well, I was already working with Santini when I was riding for Bowles Dolmans and uh, was very happy with the kit, with the performance and the comfort of it. And uh, they approached me and said, we'd love to do a personal collection with you, which for me was super exciting because, again, you know, you're always kind of told what you have to wear as a professional athlete. And to get the chance to choose what I was going to wear and, and have an input in the design was really exciting. Was it as much fun as you thought it would be, having that kind of control over what your designs were going to be? Yeah, very much so. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, a long process in, in fashion. Mm. <laughs> so this, you know, the, the jerseys that are out now have been around a while, so I'm kind of just excited to, to get to wear them finally. It's all been a bit top secret, so looking forward to wearing it. I have to say, it's such a relief because, I mean, I only came to cycling f later um, in life, and even then, for women, the range, you know, we're talking only about 10, 12 years ago, was so limited. If you didn't want to wear pink, there wasn't much of an alternative. So it's one, it is a brilliant, I think, to see so many new kits on the market. It's a good, it's a good sign of where we are, really, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, that there's customers out there that mm. want it. Um, there's a wide range of women now riding bikes, uh, from their shapes and size to the uh, experience that they have and the, the expectation they have from their clothing so I think we've we've managed it with this collection definitely do you do a maternity range <laughs> uh, no but if you if you go up a couple of sizes you'll, you'll be all right. I was going to ask how you manage it actually yeah so you, you probably know that Lizzie has just given birth to her first child beautifully named Orla <laughs> so congratulations to both of you thank you how's motherhood how's it going so far uh, yeah, it's it's full on. <laughs> um, Doesn't stop, does it? No, no. I mean, she's incredible. We've been very lucky. She's she's five and a half weeks old, and she's been on seven seven flights already. Oh so God. she's she's well travelled. Uh, but we're flying back back to France tomorrow, and we'll settle her into a routine. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But and that's your first time going back, is it? Yeah, yeah. We had the baby uh, up up in Yorkshire, close to my family. So we're excited really to kind of get home and get settled now. 
Is motherhood what you expected so far? Or did you have expectations? Uh, no, I was pretty open-minded going into it, actually, and I, I'm glad I was. I wish someone would have told me in the first two weeks that it would get easier, because I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, yeah. shit, <laughs> how am I going to keep this up? Um, but it has, you know, we've turned the corner, she's kind of coming up to six weeks, and I'm sleeping, and we're doing well. And it does get ever easier, I promise. <laughs> um, has it, I mean, it's probably too soon to say, really, because you're in new motherhood mode, but do you think it will have changed or nuanced in any way your your racing philosophy or your ambition or does it change any of that do you think yeah absolutely already I know that yeah um I'd done it since I was 15 years old to a very high level and I'd achieved a lot of things everything that I'd wanted to achieve apart from Olympic gold and I was, I was getting a bit stale and a bit kind of just going through the motions and you need to be passionate and you need to be excited to get out on your bike and um now I know that I've got two years left of this career and I want to make the most of it. And every minute that I'm away from all or I'll, I'll make count, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about training again. So that's really interesting. I think a lot of people um, assume that it will dull your ambition. But I mean, I had the same experience when I had my first child. I thought I've got to make every moment away from my baby count because otherwise, what's the point in it? So do you think it will it will help sharpen that a little bit then? Yeah, completely. Yeah. Um, but I'm just really excited about the challenge. I mean, you get to a point in professional sport where you're just searching for these little tiny increments of improvement. And just, I'm just excited about being so rubbish now and just seeing this <laughs> massive improvement again, you know? <laughs> the challenge is exciting. I'm, I'm not daunted by it. Um, the, you know, it's going to be yeah, a different challenge, but I need that. I wouldn't ask this question ordinarily because it would, it would feel like putting pressure on, but I'm sure you've thought about it a lot anyway. What's the plan for when you're getting back on your bike and what, how are you going to phase in the training? Um, so I'd, I'd like to be back training next week. Um, <laughs> Given the all clear from the doctor on Monday, that that would be the plan. And I'm I'm not going to rush into it. I'm going to be sensible. And well, I say that now. <laughs> yeah. Philip might have to help me do that. But um, I'm not uh, kind of obliged to race until June. So maybe if I come back sooner than that, it's because things have you know progressed better than I expected. But I'm I'm not rushing back. The end goal is the World Championships in at home in Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not going to compromise that for anything else. So that's really interesting that June is, is when you are due back on the bike, I guess, contractually. Have you been surprised by that level of support? Because, I mean, I, fi I find that quite surprising in, in a positive way. Yeah, I think it was really important for me to be very honest with Trek about what I was intending to do. Um, and in return, they've been very respectful and um, open-minded about how they can help me and support me. And that just makes me more motivated to give back to them because they've supported me so much already. Um, and yeah, I think we've, we've got a good plan together as a team and I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be possible without a team mm. like that to support me, so I'm very lucky. There aren't many mothers in the professional peloton, to say the least, are there? And, and if we look across the top level of cycling, we've seen Laura Kenny come back phenomenally well, certainly recently. It's been a joy to see. Dame Sarah's story, I don't know how she does what she does. But in terms of the top level, Marta Bastianelli, you know, it, it's limited really, isn't it? Do you, do you, have you taken anything from what they have done or are you just going about it entirely your own way? No, without a doubt, I'm inspired by them and, and think, okay, it is possible because there's moments in the middle of the night where I'm thinking, how on earth am I gonna do this? But it's been done before, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely motivated by their success. Um, and I just hope that I can add to that collection of role models, really, for other women who potentially are thinking of combining the two. Does having a daughter help shape that as well, in a, in a way, in that you are very much... You've always said, if you, if you see it, you can be it. And now you get to be that for your daughter. I mean, that's quite special, isn't it? Yeah, it is very special. I think... Whether, whether she was, you know, a boy or a girl, I think mm. the best thing that you can give your children is to, to prove to them that they shouldn't, you know, be limited by the status quo or by lack of confidence. It's all about your life and grabbing hold of it and, you know, taking on challenges. That's what it's all about. So we're talking world championships here, obviously, and, and we're looking ahead to Yorkshire. You know exactly what goes into winning a world's... Um, a few years on now and, and life situation has changed and whatnot, but what, how do you see the build-up to 
Yorkshire and to that, that big, big one day? Well, I know the course like the back of my hand already. I'm delighted by the route that they've chosen. It, it goes past everything that's been important in my life. And um, as a family, we're all really excited about it. Um, so in terms of training, I mean, that, that'll take, you know, kind of the same path that it's taken in build-ups to other world championships. But I think having that home advantage is massive. I will recce the course over and over again, and I'll know exactly where I'll hopefully launch a winning attack or <laughs> I'll respond to, you know, what happens in the race. But I'm going to approach it very methodically, and, and it's all about that race for me next year. So have you plans already where you, where you want to attack? I might have done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. The last road ride I did was, was on the world's course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was, yeah, 40 weeks pregnant and 15 kilos heavier. And uh, You were riding at 40 weeks pregnant? Yeah. Oh, my life. Yeah, I never expected that I'd be able to, especially in the first 12 weeks. I was very poorly, but I just felt better and healthier and, yeah, more myself when I was out on my bike. I'm going to woman up and stop complaining. At least you know that when it comes to next, you'll be a lot faster than the last time you were well, there exactly. anyway. <laughs> that, that's what the thought process was. I thought the next time I do this, it's going to be easier. And the thing is as well, um, what I'm always, always blown away by when it comes to racing in the UK in general, but, but women's racing in particular is the sheer number of people on the side of the road and the sheer volume of that support. And I guess you will also have that advantage of being at a stage in your career where you've experienced that so many times before. You've had a home Olympics. You've dealt with that pressure several times now. So that's not something I would imagine that's going to be a distraction in any way. That can only help, really, can't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky that pressure is something I need. Like, I right. I'm one of those people that performs on the big days. So... It, it would have been crazy for me to not try and come back for this day. It's, it's just going to be magic. Like, the Yorkshire World Championships is going to be huge. And to be a part of that at home for me is something I couldn't, couldn't have missed. And you, you mentioned this two-year window. What else does that window look like at this stage? Uh, I'd, like, I'd love to have one last shot at Olympic gold. You know, if I finish with a silver medal, then that's, that's no bad thing. I can mm. still look back at my career and be proud. But Rio didn't go to plan and... and I'd love to just kind of give myself that opportunity in Tokyo. And you've been, whether it's been foisted upon you, how voluntarily you've taken it or not, a, a vocal um, spokesperson, if you like, for the state of women cycling at any given time. As you come back into the sport now as a new mother, building to the Home World Championships and, and leading really a brand new women's team, where do you think we are in women's cycling today at the end of 2018? We're getting there, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if I look back 15 years ago when I first started, uh, you know, it was a totally different sport. So I think we're in a really positive place. We're, we're getting there. Investment from teams like Trek is really important. Um, you know, I hope that that kind of shows to other teams that there's a good, um, good investment opportunity there. There is really opportunity in women's cycling, and it's... It's not the same as men's cycling. It doesn't need to always be compared to men's cycling, but um, there's definitely a place in the market of professional sport for women's cycling now. Well, Lizzie, we all, I think, wish you the very best of luck in every Thank stage you. of your endeavour. I can't wait to watch it and be inspired by it. And there's no way I'm fitting into Lycra five weeks after this. <laughs> but Lizzie, thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Lizzie Dignan. Thank you. Thank you.